That was Michael Martin, he's in Cork Prison. And um, we listened to Michael's story, you know, before that he started up, he started talking about how it was for him growing up and the different challenges he had in his life. And it, it was quite emotional because, for me personally, because a lot of his experiences were very, very similar to my own. And it changed from sitting down, I walked away from that interview, and I said to James afterwards, and I says, um, I says, the change in that, his life, it went from completely chaotic. He was still young when he went into prison, it, it was completely mad. And then from that into this guy, he sat there, you could see the little breaks in between some of his conversations. He was able to sit in that bit of peace and that stillness and go about it again and talk about it and even work. He, thought, he, he spoke about some of the jobs he had, you know. These were probably the first jobs he had ever, you know, and he was able to do the jobs because he had grown himself as, as a person, you know, and there's a lot to be said you know, a lot of people that do go into prisons and do get work in prison is probably their first job. And, and trust me when I say this, I've, I, I have my own business and I employ people from prison and addiction. When you give somebody with a background in prison or addiction and they have been doors closed in their back, you give them responsibility, they will be the best employee that you will ever have. Trust me. Trust me. I get quite emotional now saying it because it's close to my heart. So, James, you can fill in. Yeah, and I suppose one of the interesting things, or I suppose the smart things about that podcast in particular for us was when, because we put them up on YouTube as well, um, and we got some negative comments on that which I deleted, but you know when me and Timmy give our story, or any settled person comes on the podcast and gives mm. the story, you can get the context of the childhood where you grew up, the poverty, the traumas and stuff like that. It's not like an excuse, but you understand the behaviour that comes after it. But when a traveller gives his story, like Michael, it's like, oh, here's the traveller being the victim again. God always might know us, you know. So that's, that's we, there's a lot of work to be done in that. You know, but we can only do what we can do, and change happens there slowly. But that was one of the things. But some of the stuff that Michael is doing as well, he's involved in the traveller mediation service, so he tries to intervene in traveller feuds, try to settle them inside, which is great work as well. So he's throwing all those negatives in his lives and he's making them positive, you know. And as, he's, as Timmy said, he was a very composed speaker, you know, when he needed to gather his thoughts, we just left him, left the silence, left him come in in his own space, and it was a very comfortable conversation. And, um, you know, he'll go on to do great things with his life, you know, he finished up the conversation telling us that he was really, really, he wanted to go out and start a family, get a job, and do good things with his life, because he had that awareness now that he actually could go on and fulfil a good legacy for the people coming behind him and show his own family and friends and people around him that it doesn't have to be this way. I can have a different life and he's going to go on and show a lot of them that it can be different. Like I have with my own siblings and James has with some of his, his own family members but we move on and we'll introduce Minister James Brown. <laughs> Thanks very much and I'm honoured to be here this morning and I want to thank the two lads because not only are they men of great talent but I think the work they're doing for community I think is wonderful, their own personal stories but given that sense of hope and I think I think the, what they are doing deserves to be hugely encouraged and I just want to say thanks and maybe just give the lads a round of applause. <laughs> Before going into law and then into politics, I originally did um, hotel and catering. I spent a couple of years working down in Cork City, in, uh, in particular in the Jury's Inn down there. I lived in Summerhill up uh, near St. Luke's, but uh, I remember the first day walking into the canteen and I thought uh, I was, uh, everybody there was from Spain or somewhere, I couldn't understand a word, but they couldn't understand a word of my Wexford accent either, but after, <laughs> after a while we got, to, we got to understand each other. Um, look, let me start by thanking our co-host, Goshka. The President's Award and Working to Change, and of course, David for his very much welcoming remarks and for kindly hosting today's event. I'm pleased that the two Norries are taking part today and for opening sharing their very personal story and journeys, not to mention their kind introduction. Listening to their words reaffirms the importance of why we are here today. 
and the importance of discussing the role of self-development within the criminal justice system and employment post-conviction. I know that care and rehabilitation are core aims of the Irish Prison Service. Work and training within prisons um, are designed to provide purposeful activity during the time spent in custody and to provide those valuable skills which will assist the individual offender in gaining, in gaining gainful employment upon release. Education and skills training and employment all go hand in hand. Education levels the playing field. It gives people the opportunity to apply and, for, and to gain higher level positions with it greater earning potential. But most importantly, it also boosts confidence and your self-belief. For many committed to prison, the education and training opportunities offered represent the first positive engagements that they have had with education and learning in their lives. For many committed to prison, um, that is so, so important. For some, it is the very first learning environment in which they feel valued and which people believe in their personal abilities. The positive impact this has on a person's sense of self-belief is crucial to building their confidence to a point where they are able to put themselves forward for job opportunities post-release. The difference this makes to the lives of so many men and to so many women who have engaged in learning during their time in prison can be life-changing. The positive impact this has is not just felt by the individual, but is felt by their families and the communities in which they live. It would be remiss of me not to take this opportunity to thank all the criminal justice sector staff, both in the prison service and within the probation service, for their continued dedication and their commitment to those they have a duty to care to, particularly over the last couple of years. The power to bring about change, influence, and be a positive role model for others should not be underestimated. This is reflected in the positive impact Gashka has, the President's Award, on the lives of the young people who participate in setting themselves the challenge of participating in Gashka. Young people who, with the assistance and support of their President's Award leader, find a commitment and determination to meet their own personal challenge. I want to commend the President's Award leaders present today for being role models for our young people and for their leadership and for their hard work. In particular to all of the people receiving Civic Merit Awards today, you have been that one strong person that has ch helped to change their lives, and we very much thank you. Achieving a Gashka Award requires immense levels of perseverance, resilience, and self-determination, especially achi when achieved within a justice setting. As you know, this collaboration between Gashka, the President's Award, and the Working to Change strategy is about changing the all too often negative narrative that implies that the presence of a conviction means a lack of job opportunities and prospects to a narrative of hope and to a narrative of transformation through self-development. There are many difficulties faced by people with convictions, particularly when it comes to accessing employment opportunities. Research published by the Central Statistics Office in October of 2020 found that just 11.8% of the men and women in prison in Ireland in April 2016 were in regular employment three years later. Employment is one of the key factors in preventing people from reoffending, with people less likely to be rearrested and reconvicted if they are given those employment opportunities. Employment opportunities also benefit society. If a person is employed, they are more likely to be able to rebuild positive relationships and stable routines. The Working to Change Social Enterprise and Employment Strategy of 21 to 23 sets out the Department of Justice direction for supporting employment options for people with convictions. The strategy aims to remove the system, systemic barriers that make progression challenging so that people can make sustainable changes. It strives to create a flexible and a responsive system that prepares people with criminal histories for the working environment. To have the skills and the talent required for identified labour shortages now and into the future, and not just at entry level positions. The strategy acknowledges that people with education and training who are in work are less likely to offend and more likely to live as good citizens. It is an ambitious and far reaching strategy as it aims to increase employment options for people with criminal histories through the implementation of 46 interconnected actions under three strategic pillars. That's the employment in social enterprises, employment in the mainstream labour market, and self-employment and entrepreneurship. The Working to Change strategy 
pushes the deployment of people with criminal histories beyond the boundaries of the criminal justice system. The strategy was developed using a core design process involving people in prison, those on probation in the community, as, those, as well as those with a past criminal history who lived the experience in their everyday lives. From the very outset, it acknowledged the positive engagement from employers and entrepreneurs alike, alongside wider society. It is about bringing meaningful and sustainable change to individuals and their communities. This requires positive <coughs> engagement from third level institutions, employers and entrepreneurs alike, all of whom see for the first, at first hand and many of whom are represented here today. It is this collaboration, this wider perspective and all of the attendees' involvement here today that makes this event so important and so meaningful. This is a very clear synergy between the transformative journey that a young person undertakes, undertakes their Gashka Award and the strategy employed by Working to Change, which is all about creating positive opportunities, meaningful employment, removing barriers to support individuals, change and creating fair and accessible routes to work for people with criminal records. Under the Working to Change strategy, the Irish Prison Service and Probation Service have worked tirelessly to ensure key strategic actions are achieved. It is also clear that over the past few years, the social enterprise sector has played a very significant role in supporting people with criminal histories back into employment. They provide a range of meaningful jobs in both rural and urban settings, which often means that an individual can match their skills their talents and their interests to a vacancy rather than just taking up any job it is can be unfulfilling. Some of these social enterprises are here exhibiting today and I encourage you, if you haven't already, to take the time and go and see each of the stands that are here. In fulfilment of a Justice Plan 2022 commitment and a key action under the Working to Change strategy, last January my department established the Employers Forum, chaired by Dominic Kemp, one of our panelists today, and our host, Google. Uh, are one of its many members. It is through the work of the forum that we have gained the insight that employers are open to recruiting talented people with criminal histories but need assistance in doing so. The members of the employers forum are actively working with potential employers to achieve this in a confidential and fair and safe way. Other government departments are also involved in providing support and we have representatives with us today from the Department of Social Protection. It has been shown that the short custodial sentences do not, in and of themselves, reduce reoffending, and that in fact non-custodial penalties, particularly supervised community sanctions, play a significant and vital role in addressing criminality, reducing reoffending, and providing a degree of protection for the public. This is supported by the Central Statistics Office statistics on reoffending. The programme for Government 2020 contains a broad range of policies and proposals that represent a coherent approach to enhancing and sustaining a more just and safe society, with a specific commitment to review policy options for prison and penal reform. Delivering on this commitment, the Minister for Justice recently published a review of the policy options for prison and penal reform of 2022 to 24. Core to this is the principle that while punishment for, the, for those who commit crime is a central element of our justice system, the rehabilitation and reintegration of offenders is at the core of our penal system. The review identifies that a sparing approach should be adopted to the use of imprisonment where appropriate. Very short sentences have a disproportionately negative impact on the lives of individuals involved, as well as the impact on the orderly management of prison services, including access to rehabilitative interventions such as education, training and addiction counselling. With a strong focus on reducing the numbers of victims of crime and the subsequent damage to victims and the families of offenders, the review acknowledges that punishment alone does not prevent reoffending or make everyone safer. Interventions and services to promote better social behaviour, rehabilitation and end offending are necessary to drive and sustain real change. In addition, as will no doubt be mentioned today, sometimes the stigma of a prison sentence can also hold people back from building crime-free lives and gaining that all-important employment that support positive choices. It is therefore important that we seek to reduce the number of short-term sentences and provide the courts with effective and sustainable alternatives. In closing, let me reiterate that there are clear social and economic benefits to helping people with convictions move on and secure employment and play a positive role in society. Employing people with convictions also accrues benefits for wider society, in the community, in relation to financial security and as regards integration through purposeful interaction 
with their fellow citizens as they engage in their jobs. This brings you back to the importance of why we're all here today. It is important that we share the messages of hope, especially with people still in the system. That change is possible. If they want to carve out a different future for themselves, we will work with them to equip them with the skills that they need to do so. And we will work to create the opportunities for them to help themselves build a better future for themselves, for their family, and for their communities. I hope you all enjoyed today and what I know will be an interesting discussion on how we can better support people to make that change. Thank you very much. Um, the connection between education and work is so, so very important. Even on my own journey, you know, starting my education journey at the age of 32 within a prison setting and doing the equivalent of the junior cert and way, working my way up, you know, all the FETAC models up as far as six and then going into third level education, you know, it gave me a good grounding and an understanding of what was ahead of me in the business world as well when I went in there. But it also helped me to understand myself as well and my own growth, my own personal journey, and that was very, very important. You know, and um, even within the pris prisons today, we have, we, have a lot of, we have a lot of men and women who just say, education is not for me, you know, because maybe their education journey was never met at their ability a lot of them might have learning differences and different things going on for them and they never got that opportunity to maybe get assessed and to find out what works for them, you know, so that's another thing that maybe needs to be looked at down the line, I think, is, is, is looking at areas like that and, you know. And uh, I remember um, years after I was, when I was in recovery, I was doing a Masters in Criminology and I started learning about uh, different criminological theories, but one of the ones I came across, they were talking about like, um, where people are on the journey for desistance, you know, desistance being like the abstinence of crime and it being like on a continuum, you know, not like a moment in time. Uh, but they talk about books for change, and for some people it's family or employment or education. When I was reading that, I, I started to make sense of my own journey because education was huge for me. Um, but one of the obstacles I met very early on was uh, because my, 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 my last conviction was 2014, but the, and the guard event since 2014, but actually ha happened in 2012. But those two years are, th there's a lot happened in those two years. But the problem was when I was trying to get a placement as a, in youth service, I, I couldn't get anywhere because the, the conviction was only six months ago. It didn't look good. And it, the, see, the guard event arrives in all context, you know. But I was in the, the Cork Life Centre, Don O'Leary, a great man in Cork, and I met him. And they said, look, I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to go on to enroll in the course because the place was a big part of it and uh, he gave me a chance and I stayed there for two years then and, and the placement, you know, just to give me that bit of time but like if you're an employer in the room today and you have the opportunity to give someone a chance, give them the chance and much sure they reward you and we've done a lot for them in the meantime, mutually, you know, um, and, it, and it's great but you need somebody like that to open the door for you and just allow you for full potential but it was great to hear uh, Minister James Brown speaking.